Ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, welcome to a William Hessian art stream. This is a very special uh, stream because we are focusing specifically on my miniature art hunts and my miniature artwork. Um, I'll be talking kind of like a history of some of the projects I've done, how they came about, and kind of projects that I'm still doing now. Um, so this is being broadcast live um, on Twitch, which you can find me just under my name, William Hessian. I'm also going to make a YouTube video out of it, so you might be seeing it that way as well. Um, you'll see a slideshow up. Um, I'm going to kind of let it run through, and you'll kind of get an idea of which things attach to which um, talking points as I go through the history, and then I'll point stuff out um, as well. I'll kind of go through the slides, so you're going to see that kind of running um, on the side there. I figured it was better to do it that way than um, do a PowerPoint kind of like um, presentation, just so that there's a lot of stuff going on, and you guys can ask questions, um, those that are on the live stream, as I go. Or... If you're watching this later, you can leave uh, comments uh, on YouTube. So I will be going, I, I won't, uh, I'll make sure to like comment on everything that comes up on the screen there um, over the course of the video. Um, so one thing I want to do before I get started is just say hello. Um, and, you know, big shout out to all of my uh, patrons. And the people that are supporting me, it's the very best way to support me and my artwork. And if you like some of the stuff that you're seeing, um, like my Art Hunt project, the becoming a patron of mine actually directly supports these kind of projects. Um, and it's been a really exciting year um, in 2020 um, for me for art. Yes, it's been a really um, scary year also with the pandemic, everything going on. Um, but it's allowed me to kind of really focus um, on the projects that I've got going on and kind of really um, start thinking about um, the stuff that I've done in the past and how to like incorporate it into things that I want to do in the future. So supporting me on Patreon is extremely important and um, becoming a follower on Twitch is super important for me. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can uh, actually subscribe to me and it gives me a little bit of, uh, you know, subscription money, helps me grow. I'm really trying to make my Twitch um, a you know, an important part of how I interact with, you know, the, my fans, my loved ones and people that are uh, patronizing me and also just to meet new people through, through the community there. So with all that being said, thank you again for those that are supporting me. Um, and you can check my, out my website, williamhessian.com to see kind of all the different things that I've, uh, that I do, you know, maze books, PBL robots, a board game I designed, um, Hidden Ladder Collective, an art collective I started. So all kinds of cool stuff going on. And I'd love for you guys to check out all of those um, and, and see the different things. All right. So this stream specifically is talking about my miniature artwork. How did it start? Um, and then how did it grow into miniature art hunts, which are public projects that I've done all across the country. And I'll kind of explain how that happened. Um, and I'll also be able to show off some of my four newest miniatures here partial partway through. So I'll kind of, uh, I'm going to go through like kind of a history of my miniature art and art hunts. And then I'm going to go, um, then I'm going to show off my four newest ones. And then I'm going to go through kind of just watching the slides with everybody and answer any questions. Um, so if you leave any questions in the chat, I'm not going to get to them right away because I'm just going through stuff and then I will, uh, make sure to hit those points at the end. So you're seeing quite um, kind of a jumble of different things throughout my art, art hunt history there. Um, all right, so when it comes to how miniature art started for me, so it really goes back to childhood. And I've been talking um, a lot about this on my Patreon because um, one of the projects on there is a childhood drawing tournament where I take my favorite 16 projects I did as a kid and I'm going to uh, have a tournament to see which one project is going to be realized in 2021. So for instance, one of the projects is A Search for Sam, which was a Where's Waldo ripoff. But I was really inspired by like by Mar Martin Hanford, um, Where's Waldo, and, and those hidden picture books like that. Um, I thought that was really cool. Small little things to find. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the process of um, searching for things and trying to find treasure. You know, I loved Easter egg hunts um, and all of that kind of thing. So 
you know, search and finds, puzzle games like that um, were always something that was really important to me as a kid. Um, and of course, I wanted to make that myself. So I spent a lot of time drawing really small. Um, it never occurred to me that people would draw bigger and shrink them down. And I actually remember when I found that out um, that Martin Hanford paints, you know, like large canvases or draws them and then they get shrunk down to make the book. And that kind of like broke my heart as a kid because <laughs> I had been practicing to draw really small. Um, but I really love miniatures. Um, I like really small little things. Um, it's always been something that I really, you know, gravitate towards. And a lot of it comes from just that process of drawing small things. I also loved baseball cards and trading cards. And that's something I still, you know, do modifications of those and stuff like that. So I, I spent a lot of time um, hanging, you know, thinking about and drawing extremely small. Um, and... And that's something that, you know, has, has, you know, lasted kind of my whole life and everything. So, um, yeah, so I have a pension for drawing small. Um, and then, you know, I went to college for art at Winona State University, um, met some amazing people there. And, you know, it wasn't long before I was trying to tie in some of my miniature art with, um, you know, with the projects I was doing. So, you know, before um, Banksy kind of hid uh little paintings in galleries and stuff like that i was i was trying to do that at our little gallery in winona state i would just go in and always put little paintings on the wall um and they're really small you know a lot of my miniatures are one inch by one and a half inches that's about the size of the miniatures that i was making and i loved it i loved just hiding them around the university and things like that and i thought if people found them and they picked them up it was just like a cool little thing that they had one of my little artworks so it was just it was just something fun for me to do. And it just was, you know, people started, you know, like looking around for them. And I had, you know, um, I remember Matt Semke when, you know, one of my really good friends in, in college, um, who took kind of that, he, he had a separate idea, not doing miniature art, but of hiding art all around into random spots throughout town. Like he climbed up a silo and put artwork up there. And then he would, just, you know, tell people like, Hey, I hid artwork way up here on the silo and people would go up and get it. You know, some of it was, it was pretty awesome because it was pretty radical of an idea. And he was also like going to some pretty dangerous places. Um, I loved it. It was very, very punk and underground kind of stuff. Um, and so that inspired me too. the way he took the picture and kind of that was like in itself part of the project was, you know, getting people to go out and do that. And, and I kind of incorporated some of that idea into my art hunts later on. Um, and I, and I, you know, I know some of that came from conversations, but the way he pulled it off was just really, really well done. And I was uh, always really inspired by that. Okay. So, so college happened. Um, I also got involved with Artomat, which was doing some smaller uh, pieces. Um, I think I got involved with Artomat a little bit later um, than when I was trying to start my art hunts, um, or right around that time, but I was already, you know, like drawing really small, and now I was making these pieces. And if you're not familiar with Artomat, that's actually where you create original works of art that get, um, that are the size of a cigarette pack. And what they do is they take cigarette machines, old vintage ones, and they restore them so that you can put artwork in there. And then for five bucks, you can get like a $5 coin and you put it in and then you get artwork and you get to pick which type, like which artists you like. So I was doing that a lot and really kind of getting into, th those were going all around the country, those or the machines were. So some of them were at museums and at little shops and stuff. So I was meeting some cool artists through that project as well. Um... And at this time, I was also started an artist in residence at, um, at the Jamestown Art Center in North Dakota. And man, the, the, the women that were running that were amazing. So it was, it was Bonnie and Taylor and Sally. Those, they were like family to me and they really took me in. And then Phyllis, who was one of the, um, she was like taking classes there, but she really took me in as well. And they were just so supportive of all the projects. And so like, sometimes I would tell them, you know, like, well, I'm here teaching kids and doing these art projects. Um, here's one of my ideas. I like to make little treasure hunts. Can I do this in the city of Jamestown? You know, like just hide art in the town. And there's the Buffalo ones right there that you can see on the screen right now. So I was like, um, super excited to just do a Buffalo art hunt. Cause, um, Jamestown has like the albino Buffalo, which I also loved. And I was just kind of like 
in love with that that old town um and so i thought it'd be so cool and they also had hidden parks all around the town right like um so, you know i lived there for on and off for six years um and and would go and i would explore and it was just like the t the the town was really just a you know an art center and then like six bars and and then it had the cool old um old vintage buildings like the old western buildings and stuff which were really awesome but there wasn't a ton to do in the town for me um so i started you know exploring all these little parks which were amazing and i'd go running to them and stuff like that and i was like this is so cool because like the if you you know if you're not familiar with these parks and going out to them you might like some of them you take a bridge to get to and some of them you go through like a path like a trail to get to and stuff and they're just really nicely laid out and and so I was like, I want to take advantage of that and also take advantage of the fact that um, I was meeting all these amazing kids that were in my art classes. And I was like, ah, I would love to, you know, challenge them to go out and find the artwork and stuff. So we did it. We, we put out a press release to the papers and um, it was my first official art hunt. So I hit 10 one and a half by one inch paintings and, you know, they're little drawings and paintings, you know, they're watercolor and ink and color pencil, um, but they're original and I would hide them in different places um, at all these different cool parks. And I would take photos of them. I would take a, three photos. So a close-up, um, a medium, which, you know, like a uh, medium hard clue, which was pulled back. And you'll see a medium is still really difficult. It doesn't give you much surrounding. But it gives you a little bit more. And then the third one was pretty panned out. So you could, you could pretty much guess where it was at that point. Um, and then I would release those in the newspaper. Um, so every day, a couple of photos would go out saying, hey, find these art on these, these art um, pieces. Um, and it was free to the public and people would go and do it and they would, you know, try to find them. And then you'd win an additional prize to some, like a gift certificate to, uh, you know, to a local company or business. And so I, I got a lot of support that way as well from, you know, people just putting prizes up. So not only were kids finding art, but they were also like getting a prize, which was cool. Sometimes it was art supplies or a gift certificate and stuff like that. So it went really well. And I did it for, I think I did a, 11 straight art hunts in Jamestown. So every year annually, right around when they had Buffalo Days, it was called. Um, which was like their celebration of the town. And I would hide um, and do it. And it wasn't always me hiding it. Um, you, a lot of times, this happened in a lot of places, um, in California and in Minnesota and in North Dakota, I would have somebody that I would kind of train to do the hiding for me. And it usually was somebody that was already an expert at finding the artwork. So um, that was like one of the key things is, you know, if people got really good at it and they loved it and then I would be like, well, do you want to be the one that hides it? That would be awesome. And so that's how a lot of these art projects got to continue. Even after I was gone, I would then make the artwork and send it off to them. So that was pretty cool um, that I was able to find just amazing people to help me. Um, but so Bonnie Taylor and Sal Sally were all really supportive at the art center art um, center there in Jamestown and allowed that to happen. And I got to test out different things. And that town was really supportive of that. Um, it was just really fun. And I know some other artists ended up doing it after I, you know, after my kind of reign ended as far as um, doing those. And it got picked up by a, co a couple other people. And I'm not exactly sure how successful it went, but it was really fun. So at that time, after like the second year or third year, I came back to Minnesota and I was doing... Um, Billy and the Old Man Design, which I was painting motorcycles with Pat Reese Sr., um, who's, you know, who I miss dearly. Um, sadly, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and he was awesome. You know, he would do the, uh, I would do the airbrush, like, artwork on the bikes, and he, he would always do the undercoats. And, uh, and he was really pushing that business forward and doing a lot. And one of the things I said to him is, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm pumped about this business, but I also want to go travel and try this art hunt project out throughout the country. Um, and my partner at the time, Kelsey, was also like um, supportive of that. So both Pat Reese and Kelsey were like, okay, go ahead, you know, do it. And Kelsey came with, and that project went from, so I went from Minnesota, which I did 35 hidden artworks in Minneapolis. So that was the first one I did in Minneapolis, but I already had been doing them in St. Louis Park. I'd started them with 
um, the Parktacular, which is like my hometown, St. Louis Park, and also Kelsey's hometown. So I, I've been doing them there ongoing for 15 years, and they still are happening, except this year because of the pandemic, we didn't do one, um, which was sad. It ended a, quite a rain. But we were, you know, it, I love my hometown, and I love um, getting to do an art hunt there every year. And, the, and then the ceremony happens at the Parktacular per, you know, event each year, you know, they, they go to Wolf Park and people can come and if they found an artwork, you can get a prize there. So it's pretty cool. Um, and some of the pictures are me there, like, you know, meeting with different people that found the artwork. Um, and well, one thing that also I, I should mention is that a lot of the, you'll see a lot of pictures of people um, finding the artwork and stuff like that. So one thing you get to do when you find the artwork, so you, if it's on the wall, you pluck it off um, wherever you, you crawl underneath wherever it is and you pluck it off and on the back there'll be a little um, thing that you peel and it gives you instructions and it says hey send in pictures of your art hunt um, and claim or you know let us know that you found it and then you get invited to come to the award ceremony um, or go someplace to get your prize um, so that was it's always a little scroll on the back which is pretty cool um, and that's always worked out really well Oh, and so for the for the art tour itself, so this is my first tour, which I then, you know, went on multiple with, you know, Abbott Russell and John Sapinski with the Hidden Ladder Collective. We, we've done now multiple across the country with Hidden Ladder Collective. Um, and so that kind of was my first um, travel across the country. So it was me and Kelsey. We... I got, I had, I got a grant from Yahoo. Yahoo paid me a thousand dollars and I got a couple other small donations from different places. Um, but pretty much had about, you know, $2,000 to go travel the country and try to do these art hunts. And the whole plan was to try to stay with what people, whoever I could and, um, try to sell some art with doing these art in the park events, which I did in each, each town. So so um, the places I went was billing my, well, so I went to, let's see, I should start in order so I don't miss any. So I, I started in Minneapolis and we did 35 on that one. And that one was, that was just too much. It was, it was really hard to manage. That's actually a picture of the, cr the crabs. And it was supposed to be um, a honoring the 35W bridge collapse, the people that had passed in that, because it was a really scary thing. So I did 35 kind of in honor of that. Um, and I was hoping that, you know, people would, it would bring different parts of, because Minneapolis is very big, but maybe bring people together and get to celebrate. So I, and I did little art in the, uh, art in the park events all across the different areas, but it went really well. It was awesome. And, um, even though it was 35, which is, uh, so many, it was pretty exciting and cool to do. Um, and so then I went to Jamestown, North Dakota and did another art hunt there. Um, and then I went from there to Billings, Montana did a, a trout art hunt there. And then I went to Portland, Oregon, um, did a squirrel art hunt there um, and met some cool people um, there as well. And then I went down to Costa Mesa, California to meet um, Marilyn Scott Waters and her family. And that was just super exciting. So I had met her online doing art projects together. Um, and she is the toy maker. Um, and was I, I remember getting to sleep in the... Uh, in a, um, it was like a tree house kind of thing out in her backyard. It was awesome. And I got to meet Joel and Ron, her family. It was just so cool. So I got to meet the, the toy maker and she hosted me so I could do this art hunt. It was, it was a blast. Um, and then, um, and it went really good. And that one actually is one of the ones that spawned, um, I think we did six years straight after that. I met, um, or actually I don't even know if I met, maybe I met the the person that runs the Costa Mesa, there's the picture of the, the crabs for Costa Mesa. Um, and uh, yeah, those ones I really liked. I thought they were really cool looking. Um, and I met the leader of the Costa Mesa cheer team um, and she was great. And she wanted to continue the art hunt even after I had left. So um, I, I got to coordinate with that. And you'll see um, some like, um, they actually timed it with their senior like or homecoming i think their football homecoming so there'd be an art hunt every homecoming for costa mesa which was just really cool and it tied in with the uh the cheer team and it tied in with the football games and um with the high school it's just a blast uh okay so then 
Um, I went from there to uh, me and Kelsey went to Salt Lake City, Utah. We did an art hunt there, which was really really cool. It was my first you know time, pretty much in all almost all these places. My first time um, being there, so it was really cool. We did an art hunt there, um, and then came back, and then since then done a couple other ones in you know portland maine i've done one and did one in northville michigan um got to meet my my friend and supporter uh took gallagher amazing artist um who's one of my patrons as well um just amazing creative person um staying with her was an absolute blast and um she got to show me around northville and help me do the art hunt and it was just a blast it, it was great and um yeah, I had such a good time there. So did an art hunt in Portland, did an art hunt in Northville. And um, yeah, and that's kind of all the places I've done one so far. Now I have done them privately as well. I've done them for weddings. I've done them for like 4th, 4th of July parties and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of taken off into different avenues, which has been, you know, really, really fun to do that as well. Um, and and so so that's kind of the the big list of all those things um and the, my you know like the per, the person that i work with is for the st louis park that we've done like 15 straight or is it 12 i don't know but it's over 10 years we've done it now um but she doesn't want uh to be mentioned but i always um thank her for all the work that she's done really actually even challenging me to think of new um or c challenging herself to think of new um, clever ways to hide art especially because when when you've done an art hunt in the same place um, and so in st louis park people have a reputation of being really good at finding those the projects especially the families that go out every year um, you start figuring out some really good ways to decipher the clues and all that kind of thing so she's been really um, pushing the envelope and finding really c creative clever new ways to hide art and this also happened in Jamestown too. We had, you know, people that go every year to do the art hunt as a family and they got really, really good. Um, so we had to come up with, uh, you know, harder and harder ways to, to hide art. And so some of the ones, some of my favorite hiding places is also something that's really fun to talk about. So like um, there was a time in Jamestown when I, this was a few years in and I was just trying to think of, you know, where else can we hide it that no one's seen? And I decided to climb up this giant pine tree that was in the middle of this tiny park. So I went, climbed all the way up. And when I got to the top, I found that obviously other people had climbed up to the top too, because even though it was really tricky to get up there at the top, there's a little clearing. So you're 20 some feet up. Um, but then there's a little clearing and people had like scratched their names in. So I thought that was so cool you find like hidden things like that all the time when you're doing these art hunts, you know, hiding stuff. So I, I, I hit it up there. Um, and it was just such a cool spot. Um, in Jamestown also, there was, um, one where there was a James, the little Jamestown river, um, runs through there and, um, which is just a beautiful spot. And there's a trail that go by, goes by and I, and I snuck down to the water um, and found a branch that was going off over the water. And there it is. There's a picture. There's the one who found it. And that was my favorite hiding spot, um, stuck to that little um, branch, um, like tree trunk kind of sticking out. And there's they even had the little kid go out there because she couldn't get out there without falling in. I had to kind of wade in there to get it. And that little kid went out and, and plucked it off of there, which I thought was so cool. Um, and it's just just imagining what people if you were walking through the park looking down and be like and there's a there was one of the clues like look at that clue it's like over the water and everything i was so excited when uh just that one that was the six eyes six eyed bu buffalo and this is one of my students she was awesome she was super talented artist um and she she was uh one of the ones that would her and her family would find um art every year really awesome there's one of the octopi Oh, it was actually the octopi that were in Minneapolis, the 35. Um, and these are like the art in the park events that you can see here. Um, and there was the, uh, where was the desert tortoise art hunt? I don't even remember where that one was. Um, but each one had a different symbol. And there's the Costa Mesa crab hunt. So these are the little posters I would make. I would print out little postcards and pass them out to different art, you know, sometimes I'd mail them to different art organizations and art centers before I'd get to the, those um, places. And then I would, you know, contact the newspapers and write these press releases to try to get people's attention about it. Um, and it usually worked pretty good. 
sometimes I, you know, rarely would not all 10 art get found. So that usually meant that there was enough exposure that people were like, oh, cool, this is going on. And it was only, you could only find one per family. So it wasn't like one person was finding all 10. There was in Northville. I did these like um, chubby creatures, which are, um, you know, similar to the um, art print I did earlier um, this year. It's actually inspired by the same thing. So uh, Took Gallagher was a big supporter of mine in Northville, and she loved these little creatures I would make. So that was um, the inspiration for the theme of the Northville art hunt. And they actually, I loved those little those little prints there, or the little um, original drawings I did. There's a, I think that's North Dakota. That one's California. So it was, you can actually see the little artwork up there in between the M. That's where it was. And that's Costa Mesa High School. That's that one. And this one is, uh, so I actually made a, a um, miniature art artwork or miniature art hunt at home kit. And so that's what that is. You can actually buy it for five, I think five, 10 bucks for me. And you can actually cut them out and you can do it at home. So I had a lot of people asking if they could do that. Here's some of the different people that found our orc. I think this is St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Um, that's Costa Mesa. That's one of the cheer cheerleaders. So I don't know. I think I can't remember if she was the one was helping hide them or find them. And this was in uh, North Dakota. And this is a cute dog. That was that you could come and show off the piece that you won there. This is uh, in Ca uh, Costa Mesa, California. One of the pre people that would go art hunting every year, they didn't want to be photographed, but they would send in a picture of, um, or actually I don't even know that. All I know is they send in, instead of sending pictures of themselves, they send in a picture of Bandit the Bear. And Bandit the Bear found artwork every year. It's pretty good. I don't remember where this is. I think it's a Jamestown one. Hidden at the bottom of that tree. And this was like a good example of like what a hard clue would be, right? You, it might doesn't look like too much, but people would often find the artwork just based off of that. They could find it really quickly. Um, so I had to start getting even more difficult with the clues over time. Um, and this would be like a medium clue. So yeah, how it gives you some idea of the trees and the houses in the area. And that was way more than enough for people to figure out um, where it was. This was in Portland, Maine, the Phoenix art hunt. And that was a lot of fun. And this was a, for the wedding. This was a when pigs, when pigs fly, because it was a wedding, I guess, of, uh, you know, really interesting um, circumstances for the, wet, um, the bride and the groom to meet. This is my best friend, Adam Hofferman. He had been looking in St. Louis Park every year to try to find one, and he found one that year. And that was great. He dressed up. He, he, looked, he looked great. He dressed up really fancy for the award ceremony, which is awesome. Hey, Sarah, what's up? I know my hair in this is wild in a lot of these. I love this th group of three would go out and go art hunting and they ended up finding one and that was a great thing. This was just showing off before I did that art tour, I had to have all that artwork done. So I think I did 150 miniatures um, and they had to be all we weatherproofed and, you know, glued down right and each scroll had to be on the back. Check out the hair there. Look at that. I had the reddest beard that day because of the sun. The squirrel hunt in Portland, Oregon. Love those squirrels. The one with the little candy and the one with the cane and the key. And this is Costa Mesa, Costa Mesa, California. I think a high school student. Pretty cool. And then we're back around to the um, to the one out over the water. So I have thousands of pictures. This was just a handful of ones that I wanted to you know select. Some of the ones that are, give me some great memories. But there's another you know, hundred of really good ones to show off. Um, and I think I'll do this every once in a while, just kind of highlight um, the art hunt, especially before I do another art hunt. Cause the whole part of be doing my Patreon this year was that I wanted to do some um, miniature art hunts. So I didn't get around to doing it obviously because of the pandemic, even though I think it's a pretty good pandemic activity, right? Cause you're out in public parks and you're looking around for stuff, but um and you're not really getting too close to anybody else. So it's something that I would consider doing, but I'm gonna wait till next summer. Um, probably do another one in Portland, Maine maybe, but I'm really open to um, doing it in different places. So I kind of always am looking for people and places to host an art hunt and kind of do that kind of thing. And people like to collect those little miniatures. And then so kind of like the thing to finish off the stream, 
is to just to show you some of the newest miniatures. So kind of what happened after I did all these projects, so in the middle of it all, um, in Jamestown, North Dakota, people were trying to collect these miniatures, but there's a lot of people that couldn't find any because it's not easy. You know, these giant parks, and the, it could be at any park in that city, right? So, and you could, you could walk right next to it. Like, here's a good example. This one was hidden underneath in Northville underneath like a, a play structure. But if you didn't crawl underneath there, you would, and it, you know, the view of that, the angle of the camera was from laying down on the ground. So it's really hard to see um, where that was. You might not be able to get down and do it. And so, it, um, you know, a lot of people would look and couldn't find them. And so I started doing um, the, you know, contemplating doing, you know, miniature ones that people could purchase. Because a lot of times people would want to buy them. Here's a good example of how small they are. Um, that was one of the Buffalo art hunts. Um, I started doing, you know, making some originals um, to sell separately in different projects and um, was invited by the Jamestown Art Center to put on a show of a bunch of miniatures. So I spent one, like, two month period drawing like nonstop. I made a hundred animals um, and it was called the hundred miniature show. And um, I actually should have got that um, one up here as a picture, but it's you, the, the show was cool because it was in an art space in the Jamestown art center. And you just saw a, a thin line running along the gallery walls. Right. And so it looks like there's just one line, but when you get up closer, it's each one's a little miniature hand drawn painting that I did and you know like original and I was doing you know really traditional kind of style art but so you know super small um and and th that was one of my best selling shows ever really I still have a few of them left but of the hundred I only have a handful left and uh it went really good and I still have some available on my Etsy shop the few that I have left but I've still um done more artwork like that and i love these buffaloes by the way check those out very tribal looking buffaloes um you know i just have a lot of fun i love making little things like that so it's always been a blast um yeah so there's still some available on my etsy and every once in a while i'll put new uh, miniatures up there i also if you if you're not familiar i did a um as another kind of a test i did miniature uh, bearded bunnies and I made a art show of those um, that is available on my YouTube. You can check that out. Um, kind of showing off uh, just the miniature uh, style. And I was, you know, kind of trying to do some fun stuff with it. So, um, but I'm going to show you the four I just made up now. And these are, um, so you, you notice that each one has a theme. This one, these were commissions. So this is kind of like the first time anybody's seeing these. Um, check them out. So this is a walleye. It's really hard to see because of the lighting, unfortunately, and because it's so small. But nice little walleye. It's got some metallic on there. Um, and there's this is like, there's the trout. So it's similar fish ones. That's kind of cool. Okay, so that was one. And then I did a loon, which this is very similar to one of the. Um, pieces I did for the St. Louis Park art hunt. Um, I did one like this. That one was a pretty cool style. Um, and the difference between the, those ones, you always know which ones I did in the art hunt because they have a, you know, a weatherproofing for out being outdoors. Um, so it's, they're quite a bit different looking um, when you actually, if you were to compare them. So you would know which ones were part of an art hunt and which ones weren't. Just based on that but and there's a moose miniature moose looks pretty good um, so they're very small tons of detail so the way I drew them is I draw with pen and ink or pen first I do a pencil drawing and then I do pen and ink over the top and then I do marker watercolor and color pencil to color it in so it's a layered process and I and here's my Fourth one, this one's actually available, so if anybody likes Yellow Labs, um, I really like it. Turned out really good. Um, but the person that commissioned it really wants it to look like a very specific Yellow Lab, um, but I didn't have a picture reference, so, um, you know, Yellow Labs can look quite a bit different, but check him out. He's very cute. So this one I'm going to put up on my Etsy. Um, 
So if you know you or you know somebody that's a Yellow Lab fan, these are this one will be available. Um, you can see this little ball there; it's hard to see, but I love the metallic on this one too. It looks really good. Um, but kind of a cool little retrospective of my miniature art projects um, and kind of that whole. Um, you know, part of my life, and I would love to do more of them. Um, so if you are in a place that is has a lot of cool parks and would you'd like to see an art hunt there, you know, let me know. I try to, you know, I try to raise a little bit of money to get to each place um, and, you know, try to pick a date and get support from local businesses and stuff like that, and then go ahead and do the project. And it's a blast, so... Well, thanks for uh, tuning in to the miniature art hunt history um, and any questions and things like that that you guys have, I'll make sure to uh, respond in the next one as well um, because I'm going to do another kind of retrospective like this um, before any of the other art hunts, kind of as a way to promote the next art hunts um, and things like that. So um, hit me up if you have any questions or if you have any interest in well, picking up any of the artwork, you can go to my Etsy, etsy.com backslash shop backslash my name, William Hessian. Um, check those out there. And I do commission miniatures as well. Um, they take a little, quite a while, but you're welcome to commission um, small little pieces. Um, just let me know about that. But thank you so much for checking it out, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good one. Bye.